here again with So Learn Create. Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you click the bell notification, it'll notify you when I upload a new video. I hope you like today's project, and if you do, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Today's project, we're going to be making a quilted heart. There's an organization where you can, gives you the ground rules for hiding your quilted heart for other people to find. So today I'm going to show you how to make your own heart and hide them in your neighborhood for others to find and bring a little joy to everyone's life. So let's get started. So today's project will be making the quilted heart. I'll link in the description box below the I Found a Quilted Heart website where you can hide, it gives you the rules for hiding your heart in your neighborhood or in your town for people to find and then people can post a picture of the heart and you can go and check back and see if somebody found your heart. We'll be making the strip piece method with using paper. This is a great project to bust up your scraps and use up those little pieces from quilt projects, leftover quilt box, or your scrap pieces. You'll need some scraps, a piece of batting, a backing fabric, which I'll use, I'm using muslin, a piece of plain, plain copy paper, and if you can tell, I always use scrap paper. And then I'll put in the description box a link for the heart shape that will be on my blog, and you can print that off too. And if you want to add some embellishments, like I did here on this heart, you would need some ribbon, lace, or something like that. And then also you'll just need your basic sewing supplies, scissors, pins, and some wonder clips. So this is how we're going to do the strip pieces method. First I'm going to take my paper square and I'm going to take a piece of fabric and I'm going to put it across the center of my paper. And I'm going to put a pin right in the center of that. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut my fabric just a little bit beyond the paper so I don't have all this excess fabric. Then I'm going to take my next piece and I'm going to fold it face down, right sides together, and I'm just going to line it up. And when we go to the machine, we're going to stitch straight across here and then we'll fold it back. So when I go to the machine I'll show you how to finish this strip piecing. Now we're at the machine. On my machine I'm going to use my quarter inch foot because I like the guide that it gives me. And remember we pinned our first piece to the center of our paper and then we laid our second strip just right on top face down. When you're paper piecing the only thing you have to remember because it makes it easier is to readjust your stitch length and your stitch length needs to be really short either two or one and a half. I have mine set on one and a half. So at the machine we're going to just stitch a straight stitch all the way down this seam. The only thing you have to kind of watch is make sure that your pen is over far enough so your machine foot doesn't catch. We're going to just stitch straight down. I'm going to take it off. Then I'm going to take and I'm just going to finger press that strip back. I'm not worried if my edges are completely straight because when you're a, a machine piecing, it all works out in the end. I'm going to remove that pin, then I'm going to take my next strip and I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to take it right sides to right sides and put it on top of the strip that I just sewed. I'm going to line it up. The only thing you want to make sure is that you have a little bit of your fabric off the edge of your paper. I'm going to line that up in the machine. and stitch down this seam. Pull it out. 
clip my threads. Now my first half is finished. Finger press that, and as you can see, this is off the edge of the paper, which is exactly what I need. And that tight stitching almost makes the paper perforated. So when I get ready to remove the paper, it'll be easier. Then I'm going to flip the block around and I'm going to repeat the same process on this side. So I'm going to take my next strip, going to lay it down, I'm going to trim it off just so I don't have to deal with that long tail. Once again, I'm not worried about anything being straighter even because it's all going to work out. I'm going to stitch down this seam. press it and then I'm going to do my next piece of fabric. I like to work with all the same colors of fabric but you can work with a combination blue and green, red and yellow, whatever light you like or you can do a multicolored fabric piece. Almost to the edge. So I'm going to add one more strip right along this edge. And because it's so close to the edge, let me find a piece here. This one will work. I'm going to come over on top of that next, that piece that I just put down, the red, solid red with the little stripe. I'm going to come over just a little bit and stitch so that I have a little more of my red and white polka dot showing. Put it in the machine. going to fold it back, just finger pressing it. Now you can see that I've covered my paper all the way around with my stitches. Basically what you've done is you've created your own piece of fabric using different strips of different fabrics. So let me take this to the ironing board and press it and I'll come back and show you what the next step is. Now we have our fabric created on our paper backing. Next we're going to cut out our heart. You can either place your heart on top so you can kind of see how you want it with the pieces of fabric showing or you can flip it over on the back and trace it on the paper. I like to do mine from the front because I kind of want to see how those pieces are going to come out. And sometimes I will turn mine a little bit on an angle so that when my heart, this one I this one I did kind of straight, but I think today we'll do kind of an angle. So you're going to place your pattern down and you're just going to trace around. I use a pencil, but you could use a pen or a marker, whatever works, because you're not really going to see that line. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out my heart, paper and all, all the way around. And as you can see, I'm cutting through the paper. This helps keep the shape that you want with all those pieces stitched. Only tricky part is right here in this point if you have it on a seam like I did. 
but it's not too hard. Just take your time. Go all the way around. The nice thing about these hearts is there's really no wrong way to make them. I'm going to save these pieces for a project that we did a couple weeks ago, our fabric collage heart. These scrap pieces work great for that. I'll link that in the description box below also. So now we have our heart. Next I'm going to take and I'm going to trace out my heart on my background fabric, which I'm using just muslin. We're going to trace our heart on our um, batting that we're going to put between the top and the backing fabric. And I like to go ahead and cut those out also. Right before we go back to the machine, we need to take this paper off. So I'm going to flip it over. And because our stitches are so small, if you kind of bend it back, starting at one end, just kind of use your fingernail and gently pull it off. They start at the end and if you gently, you want to do it gently so you don't pull your stitches out, that piece will just come right up. And when you're pulling your paper, the main thing is you just want to pull gently so you don't pull your stitches out. Grease it back. Pull your paper off. I'm going to finish pulling all my paper off and then I'm going to make my uh, cut my heart out of my batting and my backing and I'm going to go to the machine and I'll show you the last step. Now we're ready to make our quilt sandwich. Anytime you make a quilt sandwich you always start with your backing fabric and you want to make sure that your right side, if you had a right side to your fabric, was facing down. So I'm going to put my backing down and on top of that I'm going to put my batting. I use just cotton batting that I had left over from quilting but you could use felt or any flannel anything that gives it just a little bit of, of padding in the quilt to the heart. Then I'm going to lay my heart right on top. If you want to add a hanger to your heart so that the person that finds it could hang it up you can use ribbon or anything you like. You just need it to be about four or five inches long and I'm just going to loop that like I did this one and I'm going to put it in between my backing and my batting just like that so that when I quilt it it's going to just catch it. I'm going to take some pins and since I'm adding a loop at the top I always like to pin that in place and then I'm going to pin just somewhere down in here. When I go to the machine, I'm going to start probably down here at the top or in the in the top, probably at the bottom because it'll be easier with that loop. And I'm just going to do a stitch kind of close to that edge all the way around. Then I'm going to come back like I did on this one and I'm going to do a quarter inch away from that and just do a second stitch. And if you wanted to, you could add more stitches across with your decorative stitches on your machine. It's a great way to practice those. Or you could do any other kind of embellishment. So let's head to the machine and finish our quilted heart. At the machine, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that pin just to make sure that I don't stitch over it. I'm going to use my quarter inch guide and I'm just going to go all the way around being sure that I catch this loop up here at the top. When you get to a curve, if you just want to stop and pivot slightly, go a little further, lift your presser pit, pivot a little more. I'm going to take this pin out, pivot slightly more. I'm going to go to that point, tuck that back under. I'm going to go all the way to that point of the heart. I'm going to lift and pivot so I just line that edge up with the edge of my heart. Back 
down to my point and go right back over the stitches where I started. Now from there, I can just move out slightly. I don't have to take it out of the machine and then just do another heart shape right inside that stitching. Come to that point, pivot again. Right back down to that bottom point and do a little back stitch there. Clip my threads and now my quilted heart is finished. I caught my loop at the top. I'm going to clip all my threads and get it all nice and neat. And then the last thing you want to do is go to the I Found a Quilted Heart um, website and you can print off these little tags where you can people when they find your heart after you've hidden it in your neighborhood then they can post a picture and you can go back and see who found your heart and what they said about it. There's some very inspirational stories about the found a quilted heart. People found them at times when they just needed to know that somebody else cared and that little heart means a lot to them. If you want to you can trim up your edges where your batting shifted on you a little bit. Make it nice and neat. or you can just kind of leave it, whichever you prefer. I like to kind of trim my batting, but leave my, my top piece done. So there's our I, uh, quilted heart for the I Found a Quilted Heart project. It's really fun and exciting. It's a great thing to do with your kids. Um, kids really love to hide them in their neighborhood and then check the website to see if their heart has been found. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and give it as many likes as we can get. And I'll see you in the next video.